Last time I talked about how you could use feature selection as a predictive quality control tool within Statistica Data Miner. Today I'd like to talk about how you can set up a process to be able to help you to know when to use that predictive quality control output from the feature selection. I'm going to go back to the machine data that was used last time um, that has the different batches and then the sublots of material and all the different machines. And then at the end we had this the um, metric that was of interest, this quality score. I mentioned that uh, the quality score was meant to be, you know, as good as it possibly could be, and it, but it couldn't be any more than one. So 100% is the, the best you can do, of course. And so it is not necessarily a normally distributed data, but as we know, um, with uh, an individual's chart in, for statistical process control is distribution independent. So we could do an SBC chart of this data. Uh, but what I would like to, to set up and maybe motivate here is that we could take the, the average of this quality score data and then plot a time series of uh, by day. So we're going we're gonna to make an assumption here. So remember I, I mentioned that I obtained this data and I'm not necessarily sure what time frame all this data was taken over. But let's make an assumption so that we can, um, I can set this discussion up for today. That this quality score, um, these represent the quality scores from one day's worth of data. Okay, so this is just an assumption we're gonna have to make for the discussion today. Okay, so that being said, I went ahead and calculated what the mean of all these data points were. So there, if you'll remember, there, let's go down here in the bottom, there were 1,396 data points. So we're just going to take the mean of the quality score over all these 1,396 cases. So I already did, I already did that. Um, so I'm just going to pull this up in the workbook here. Go to the descriptive statistics. Um, for the quality score, it shows here that there were a valid scores of 1,395. So uh, there was one that was not valid. Uh, the mean of these scores is 0.97. 3876. So let's just round up and say it's 0.974. So what I did is I just put, created um, another data set. So I, I mocked up some data here. So this is not real data. Um, I just took this uh, uh, last score and the mean that I calculated and put it at 0.974. And so what we have here is a a fictitious data time series of data. So each data point represents a, the mean score of the data uh, collected for that day. So on this first day, the mean of all the data points for that day was 0.988 and so forth until this 20th day, which I put in the average score that we have from that data set um, that I've collected and was able to obtain. Okay, so what I could do is I could create an SPC chart of this, an individual's chart. And you just go here to the Statistics tab and go to the QC charts. And you could uh, go ahead and do the individuals and moving range. That's the one we would like to do. I've already um, done this. I just did this individuals, individuals and moving range for this quality score of, of 20 data points. Okay, so let me just close this and then go to the workbook. And we'll go to the quality score um, SPC chart. So here's my um, time series, and then um, I've had it calculate a three sigma limit, and in this case, the three sigma limit is um, 98%. And so you'll see that this last data point um, falls outside the three sigma limit. And so we would expect this to be abnormal. And remember when I mentioned last time that for this uh, data set that I've obtained, it would be abnormal, um, something that we wouldn't expect to happen for or we would we would want to know if it was less than 98 percent because that would not be considered to be normal okay so what we can do is we could use this as an SPC chart as a uh, precursor to doing the predictive quality control so we could just plot the time series each day take the average of the quality scores 
And then if it falls below this um, three sigma limit, then that would prompt us to go do the predictive quality control and look at it. So I think the, the advantage of this is that it would prevent you from having to look at that predictive quality control every day um, because lots of times, I mean, it's not going to be instructive at all. And the idea would be that if there's these, this, this natural variation that's occurring, um, it's not really uh, meaningful to me to go figure out well, why this data point here on the 12th data point is different from the 13th data point in this time series. Yeah, there is a difference, but in practical terms or in statistical terms, there really is no difference between these. And so it's not really fruitful for me to go and try to assign a cause why these are different. But if it falls outside of the three sigma limit, this is abnormal. And then there should be a special cause that makes this data point fall out. That would prompt me to go look at the predictive quality control now that I explained in the last blog. And then that be, would become meaningful. So I look at this SPC chart as setting up a scenario where you would want to look at the predictive quality control that I discussed previously. So I thank you for watching and I hope you find this uh, uh, meaningful that this is now I'm proposing a two-step process, SPC and then predictive quality control when the data point falls out of the limit, of the lower control limit. And that's when we would go and try to assign a, a root cause to what, when this data point is abnormal according to the SPC chart. So thank you again for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks.